Welcome to the Midwest Education Technology Community Podcast, otherwise known as METC. METC is a nonprofit organization based out of St. Louis, Missouri, with a mission to motivate, engage, transform, and connect all learners to advocacy, partnerships, and professional learning opportunities. METC is a premier affiliate of ISTE. To learn more about METC, follow us on social media at METC Ed Plus. You may also check out our website at METCEdPlus.org. METC is a program of Education Plus. To learn more about Education Plus, go to EdPlus.org. Hello everyone, Jonathan Lee here with Greg Lawrence. And we are here to talk to you about the Google extravaganza coming into you in July, provided by METC. Greg is going to be a feature speaker, and I wanted him to kind of give you a quick heads up of what he's going to be sharing at this awesome two-day event. So I'll be uh, sharing multiple uh, sessions throughout the two days, uh, but most importantly, going to be sharing about uh, creation with Google Chrome and Google Chromebooks. Um, uh, there's a lot that you can do in, uh, when we give our students the opportunity to create amazing things happen. So we're going to be looking at a lot of resources that we can put in our teachers' hands or students' hands for them to create. Awesome. And I know I'll be doing a session on hyperslides. That's what I wanted to say. Hyperslides is what I'll be doing a session on. So how you can turn those slides presentations into more just a presentation. So, Google event coming up, Google Stravaganza in mid July. Check it out, MTC at plus.org for more information. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to the, another episode of the METC Podcast. My name is Jonathan Lee, and I am your host. This is episode 31. In this episode, I talk change with the great change agent of Greg Lawrence. Greg Lawrence is director of technology out in the Wentzville School District, and we have a discussion on how... We deal with change, some good character traits dealing with change, um, and really at all levels, both as a teacher, uh, administrators, both district and building administrators, and then as tech uh, personnel as well. How do you deal with overall change? A lot of things roll out over the summertime because not many people are on the network, and uh, it's a great time to kind of get things up and running and ready for when you need to come back, which can be stressful. And so we talk about that transition back into uh, the classroom after the summertime. And so I understand that this is coming out at the beginning of summer, so if you'd rather listen to this at the end of summer, that's fine. But uh, know that it, I think I always thought sometimes a great time to just kind of not only relax, but also kind of ease into some of the change. Think of different things that you can look at. Um, you know, she's not, she's not always up and going so all the time, but you can ease into some of the newer things that are out there. So Greg does a great job of explaining uh, how he handles it and how um, he works with his, te- his teachers and staff and in his district. So check him out. Connect with him on Twitter and Google Plus if you need to. And I uh, hope you enjoy the show. So without further ado, let's get into the episode. Hello there, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the METC Podcast. This is Jonathan Lee. I'm here with another special guest. I came out to him today, so we are in Wentzville School District. Greg Lawrence, welcome to the episode. Thanks. Glad to be here. Yeah, so before we get into our uh, topic of change and how scary that is, uh, how about you tell everybody a little bit about yourself? All right. Well, uh, Jonathan, as you said, my name is Greg Lawrence, uh, Director of Technology for Wentzville School District. Um, I'm a previous middle school uh, music teacher and computer teacher. Um, I also have one year of art to throw in there, so I don't know (laughs) how much that is to brag about, but uh, uh, that was part of that. And then I also um, worked as an instructional tech coach for Winsville for um, for about eight years, um, and then been in a role of director of technology. I'm coming up in my third year here. So, okay. yeah. so when we say you're special, you mm. really were special for a couple of years. That's right. Music that's and exactly, art teacher. That's exactly right. One of those yes. specialists. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So how did you make that transition from teaching music in that one year of art into the, that tech role? Um, so 
my master's is in informational technology and instructional technology uh, specifically. Um, so through working through my master's, I really saw kind of the purpose of um, technology and instruction and saw that in my teaching. So uh, when we had the role open up in our district, um, it was one of those, wasn't too sure if this opportunity was going to come around <laughs> again. Uh, so definitely wanted to take advantage of that and um, just knew um you know, there's some things that we could do to support our teachers and, you know, just fully see kind of how uh, technology can uh, impact student learning. Okay, so I'm going to challenge you right off the bat here, uh, just because I'm learning as I'm, as I'm listening here. But uh, so you taught music and you were an instructional tech coach for eight years mm-hmm. and you've been in this zero for three years. Correct. So you were a music teacher for 11 years ago, thereabouts, Correct. right? Correct. Technology has changed a lot in 11 years. What did tech use in the music classroom look like 11 years ago? Do you remember? So 11 years ago, so Google Docs really didn't exist back yeah. then. Uh, there was no iPad. Um, so the technology tools that you know exist now definitely were not around back then. Yeah. So what was used in my classroom actually were uh, little Mac minis, and we were util- utilizing GarageBand, um, okay. iMovie. Um, and so those were the those were the tools that we're using back there, and they're still being yeah. used today. They're still being used today. Yeah. Yes, yes, okay. definitely seen some iterations of it, but yeah. um, the idea is still there. Yeah. All right, so that kind of segues into our topic today. We're going to talk about change, and so uh, the music classroom has changed. All classrooms have really changed in the last eleven, ten, about five years, really. Um, and so change tends to scare people, right? And what do you have to say about that? You know, I, I, that I mean, change change scares everyone. I, you know, and, I mean that is a very very true statement. And I think you know part of that is uh, because there's a lot of emotion that's in tied in, tied into change. And I think that's really what um, you know where the scariness comes from. You know, there's comfortableness in where we are currently, uh, what we may be looking at, what we may be doing, and then you know moving to, to, towards the future. What is that going to look like? So there's always um, I think the emotions. Um, is really what drives a lot of that or a lot of the change um, with our teachers. And, you know, we have teachers who have been teaching one year. Um, we have teachers who have been teaching 25 years. And, um, you know, what they've experienced in 25 years is a lot of change. Mm-hmm. And, you know, to add something else, um, maybe technology, maybe music, whatever it may be, it definitely brings out those emotions. And um, everybody has a strong, strong feeling about that. Yeah, and I think the unknown is, is really kind of where that fear comes from. You know, Absolutely. I mean, change can be good, no doubt. Um, and, and a lot of times it is. Mm-hmm. But you don't know what that's going to look like. Mm-hmm. And that part is, I guess, the scary part, like right. you were saying there. So I heard a story one time, uh, Jamie Cassip, who's uh, the uh, uh, evangelist, educational evangelist for Google, yep. uh, he was talking about change and he shared the story. And I thought, you know, it really kind of drove home the point. And he said, um, you know, he travels a lot for Google. And he said, you know, if I, um, you know, if Google came to me and said, hey, we know you've been traveling a lot. And uh, actually what we want to do for you is actually just get you your own plane. Um, that way you don't have to <laughs> wait in line. You know, at the airport, you can just jump on your plane, go, and off you go. He's like, that's a great change. He's like, what if uh, what if Google came to me and said, hey, we've noticed you've been traveling a lot. Actually, what you need to do is, uh, you know, um, we've actually got you tickets on a Greyhound bus, and that's actually how you're going to be traveling the country. <laughs> They're all changes, yeah. and they bef- definitely affected him, you know, could affect him in different ways. Um, and I think it's that that out now, you know, kind of the future, you know, the scariness kind yeah. of looking at how is this going to impact me. But that story always has stuck with me because there are two great examples of change, um, and they're all achieving kind of that same on point, the same role, yeah. But um, yeah. just kind of the outlook is a little different on there. Yeah, absolutely, no, that's a good one. He's a, a good good person to follow. He shares a lot of good things. Like absolutely, that. yes, yeah. yes. So, yeah. all right. So, in the realm of school, and well, I'm sure we're going to hit this from different. Um, job roles but from from a teacher's perspective um how can someone handle change because we're this, is, this episode's gonna come out in the summertime and summertime is a great time for administrators to change the, what the look building looks like for tech department to kind of change a bunch of things that are, are you know coming out um how does a teacher how can a teacher best handle change when they come back yeah I think there's a couple things. One, I think patience is just part of that process. Um, you know, as as you venture down those roads um, with change, you know, having, you know, many of us and, you know, I tend to be this way too. I want to run. Mm-hmm. Um, and sometimes I'm not able to run as fast as I would like to. Or, you know, that reality is 
I may not need to be able to run right now. I actually may need to be crawling, um, you know, as part of that process. But um, I think there's different speeds um, that you you move at, and I think that's one of those. And I think patience comes with that. But with patience, I think they're really kind of that bigger piece is the empathy and listening and um, you know to those around you. Um, not saying, not talking about the negative you know, uh, responses on why are you doing this, but more of just being opening, open and, and listening to those around you and uh, for feedback um, and really understanding, you know, what thoughts uh, they have. And as an instructional tech coach, I mean, um, there are teachers that loved, um, you know, moving forward. Hey, you know, there's this thing called Google Drive and it's just going <laughs> to change your life. And, you know, they jumped on board yeah. but then you have others you know, you mentioned Google Drive. They're like, well, we've written on paper for 25 years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's working. You know, so there's that, you know, let's understand kind of where you're coming from. So having that empathy and open, you know, feedback, um, honesty, I think that's a big, uh, big piece. And sometimes I don't, I, you know, I don't think we always give that, um, you know, allow for that, being able to listen and hear back from those around us. I agree. And I think uh, a good having resiliency is good, too. Yes. I think because if you are one of those runners, which... I know you are, and I am as well. Um, you know, if you use the analogy of, of the track star, right, who's running out of the gate, and they fall down, that's going to hurt a lot. Right. And so when you fall, when you are the runner in tech, whether it's tech innovation or whatever, and something breaks down, or it's going to be painful because right. you're, like, stuck, right. right? But if you're going in slow and you fall down, it doesn't hurt as much right. because you've got a little more time. So it's not necessarily a plug to go slow. Right. No, that, absolutely, yeah. But um, just – be aware that you're still going to come across bumps even when you're a runner actually sure. you'll probably have more bumps was a runner right because typically you're trying things in beta form and that just means yeah. there's going to be issues a lot so, more glitches yes yeah, yes, yeah. so just yes, be prepared yes. for that yes. and, and so as a building administrator or as a district administrator how do you who, um, help handle change or work with change that way you know, I think it comes back to, you know, just as we talked about, um, it definitely, uh, I like to bring multiple people, you know, involved in ha into that conversation, you know, really kind of, in a way, kind of being the cheerleaders, but also um, being able to listen to them with the feedback also. As we move forward, you know, here's what we're thinking. This is where we're moving. You know, what are your thoughts? Let's keep moving forward that. But um, knowing where we're going and keep sharing that vision, I think that's another, you know, another piece on there is, um, share that vision with everybody. Like, here's where we're going. This is where this is what we're going to see at the end. Um, and keep sharing that vision, bringing everybody onto that vision. Um, and um, I think I, I think that's a big a big piece of that. Also, um, just just sharing and being open um, through that, as we've talked about. Yeah, yeah. And so, um, as a, as the tech administrator here, uh, you've got probably a lot of changes. You're you're ready to roll out this summer yes. um i don't know if one of them is or not but the new google gmail mm -hmm. um yes. i know that's a lot of districts did not switch that on yeah. the end of year last year because right. people may freak out if they right. see the new, yes. all the new stuff um and again but there's other other things so as you roll out new items like that uh and again i'm not if you're winsville and you're listening i'm not saying you stay in that <laughs> i'm just using that as an example uh, but how do you effectively help your staff mm -hmm. your district um, deal with those changes. Yeah. So, um, so one of the stories. So last year, I'll just kind of use this as an example and kind of where we're going this year. So last year, we switched to laptops, which I know is it's kind of um, you know there's always that process of technology upgrade. But two uh, pieces important, you know, um, you know, most importantly is we removed the CD drive from our <laughs> from our computer choice, and oh, no. we also removed the number pad. And um, you know, you you know, some of the feedback on there is great. You know, um, my wife was one. She's like, I can't even tell you the last time I utilized my CD drive. And I know that's the same case. You know, you open up your CD drive, you're like, holy cow, did not know I still had a CD in there from three years ago. Um, <laughs> but so, it was a cup holder. Right? right, yeah, that's exactly right. So you've got that, um, you know, piece of that. Um, but the change um, behind there, we weren't changing just because, hey, we wanted to remove the CD drive. Our, yeah. our focus and purpose behind it was we we're trying to create classrooms that are uh, flexible, that are accessible, that um, our teachers aren't tethered by the technology. You know, um, with our older laptops, you know, the battery life wasn't so great. So they had to be t tethered to the wall. Mm -hmm. um, they also had to, you know, if they're connected to a smart board, they had to be connected with the VGA cable. But if, with our new laptops, um, we are very focused on excellent battery life. We're focused on you know quick set, uh, startup speeds. Um, so the whole purpose behind there 
was, um, you know, the end result was for our teachers was to provide them with an, uh, a tool that technology wasn't dictating how the classroom was going to be designed, but the technology, you know, and the tools that we we're providing them was allowing the teachers to have more control. Um, and, you know, that was our story that we kept, um, you know, working with our teachers on and sharing with them. Uh, but there, you know, as we've talked about that empathy, we were listening, there was definitely, you know, concern and some things that we, you know, missed in that process. And, you know, we walked through, um, but, um, you know, so CD drives, you know, there are some software that needed to be, you know, that were in our curriculum, we're on CD drive. So yeah. we've talked through that. So, you know, working with them, you know, having that empathy, listening, you know, we moved some of our, you know, content to network drives, moved it to Google. Um, we did provide a couple of CD drives just in those, you know, cases. But uh, being able to listen, having that empathy, um, you know, and, you know, I've always heard this phrase, um, you know, having a life in beta, you know, just, you know, we're not done yet. We're keep yeah. moving uh, forward and, uh, you know, making those iterations. And um, and it's funny as we're talking about this, I mean, ultimately we're kind of talking about a design process, yeah. um, which is not yeah. really the, you know, the goal, but that's really part of what it is, is that, you know, we are listening, we're making changes and we're moving forward because after all, we're trying to do what's best for our students. And uh, the reality is, you know, it doesn't matter what teacher you're talking to, um, we all want that for our students. Um, so we're all tra- trying to achieve that same goal. It's just moving forward that way. Yeah, so I mean, we're constantly wanting to get better, right? So right. I mean, the teacher, you want to get better as your, at your mindset. craft. Yeah. yeah, you want to have that growth mindset. And as a teacher, you want to have uh, the ability to get better at your craft, whether it is your uh, pedagogy or what are skills. Um, tech is the same way. We want right. to consistently keep making sure we are providing the, the best tech that's out there and the most the one that makes the most sense absolutely uh did you buy any numerical pads uh we we uh so i will say technology did not uh we did have a couple (laughs) of schools buy them um you know just on there and once again uh that support um definitely listening to it and um you know talking to that need and you know one of the things we even said to our you know our administrators and our schools were like give it two months just yeah. give it two months and let's see and you know we had one school that you know after two months we talked and we we're like okay there there's a need let's work through that and yeah. um on there so yes absolutely yes, <laughs> yeah I, yes. I remember when i was back in the classroom we went from uh i believe we just went from one type of laptop to another laptop mm-hmm. and that laptop lost its keypad mm-hmm. and there were numerous uh usb Outcries, yeah. usb yes, yes. number pads that were done and, and i can get it if you're entering in a lot of grades absolutely uh, then that can yeah. make a big difference but yeah. um uh maybe you should enter so many grades no, no. <laughs> just stop no. taking grades all together right <laughs> exactly. yeah what's the board? Yes. no all right so um other kind of changes other kind of, so so when you talked about change you sound like you, you talked about the importance of sharing your vision right um the importance of sharing purpose um and if you give the teachers those pieces, your educators those pieces, it makes change a little less scary. Is that right? Correct. Absolutely. I think those are big pieces. And, you know, along the way, I think there, there, there are the naysayers. And, um, you know, I think, you know, obviously listening and sharing that vision, but ultimately, you know where you're moving. And I think, you know, having that straight, that goal, not trying to veer off. Um, of that and uh, you know that makes it tough too because I I, you know we all have those good days and bad days even as educators you have in a classroom you're like this is where we're going and you know you have a couple kids that are aren't just getting it yeah Um, you know so that's always tough but then when they finally do you're like oh my gosh this is what we've been looking for this is where we've been moving uh, towards and I think uh, you know just keep uh, just you know where you you know where you're going keep sharing that vision keep driving forward um, with that yeah so let's let's think about the those runners we brought up earlier, right? Um, at, you're you're in a district of how, how many students do you have? In uh, we have uh, growing. You know, uh, we always say this: we're the fastest growing district yeah. in the state of Missouri. So we're at sixteen five at the kind of the end of the year. So we're gonna keep okay. uh, jumping up. I'm gonna guess probably close to seventeen thousand by the start of this school year. Yeah, that easy. So um, as as you are rolling out tech, buying new devices for a district that large. Um, surely you've got some teachers that are running ahead of the pace mm-hmm. in which you yeah. are. So they want to they want to roll out this new stuff um, even beyond you know what you are already doing. So right. how does a runner go about uh, within an innovative tech world um, go about adding new features or adding new apps or devices um, that may be I don't edgy is not the right word, but you know really ahead of its time right absolutely kind of, how do they how do they go about adding those or doing those things within their classroom without 
getting their hand slapped. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> so I think there's a couple things. Uh, they are one, and I think, you know, in Winsfeld, I think we do a great job of, um, you know, just all pretty much saying yes, you know, um, having this, uh, open mindset of, you know, let's try it. I mean, what's this going to look like? Um, so I know there's been things, you know, um, I, I know last year, uh, I was at a conference, actually METC and, um, we were listening to uh, one of the featured speakers, and he was talking about. Uh, he's like, in, you know, in a couple of years, I see Amazon Echoes, Google, you know, uh, Homes in classrooms, and I was like, that's a really edgy thing. And sure enough, this year <laughs> had had questions about, yeah. hey, can I have this? You know, yep. you know, and the idea is like, hey, I'm really intrigued by that. Let's try it. You know, and having that, uh, you know, that open mindset of, you know, let's try it. We're not committing yet, but we are having this. Hey, you know, this may be a tool that just completely, um, you know, opens up new learning in classrooms. So uh, we have things like that. We also want to provide our teachers with a lot of great resources. So uh, we actually have multiple things that we even have in our district. We have what we call a beta group. Um, So that beta group, we um, it's actually all done through Google Classroom. Teachers sign up um, with the code and then random times throughout the year, we're like, Hey, um, we're trying something new. Um, who wants to try this out? And we have a couple of stipulations, you know. So, for example, actually, we were talking right before the show uh, recording here. We were talking about Mirrorcast, which is the wireless technology from Microsoft, and we had um, a couple of teachers that we were wanting to try it out with. And so we opened it up to the beta group and said, "Hey, we're looking for teachers to try this out. Here's what you're going to get. Um, we're going to give you a Mirrorcast for your classroom, um, and that way you can be wireless in your classroom. We just looking for feedback, and we had." you know, a handful of teachers take us up on that. Um, we utilize Tyler Sis, which is our grade book mm-hmm. information system. Uh, they're rolling out a brand new grade book update. And if you want to talk about a crazy change, oh, man. Yeah. Uh, the new grade book, you know, things, buttons are changing, you know, things are moving a little different, acting a little different. Um, so this past semester, we did the same thing. We opened it up and said, hey, we're looking for teachers to try this out. Things are going to break. Things aren't going to work. Um, we know that, but we value your opinion. We value your thoughts. We want to see how things move forward. So we opened up those doors um, nice. for that. So how do I get in yeah. that classroom? Uh, how do you get in that classroom? Yeah, I'll give it to you. Yes, yes, no. Yeah, and we, you know, we uh, we have a couple other instructional tech coaches, Sam, um, R.C. Mm-hmm. Noll, and Amanda yep. Moody, yep. Um, that uh, they also run what we call a GEG group, a Google Educator group that we run in Winsville. And um, we've even seen iterations on there where um, we have a level one, which they're working on their Google level one certification, Google level two. And we got done, we're like, where do we go with these teachers who are leading? Uh, so we've even had conversations about even taking those who, who are teachers who are like running, you know, kind of on that leading, bleeding edge, um, you know, to be, partake and kind of come up with them some innovative uh, projects, you know, almost like a shark tank to present and, yeah. um, on there. But uh, the really reality is we, um, you know, the more that we stand in the way, um, you know, is not necessarily a good thing. So we yeah. want to open up as much as we can for our teachers. And so I, I would just kind of close that out by saying um, I think you brought up great points from just the administrative standpoint. Is that you, it's important to share your vision and have purpose, right? And so even as a runner, as a teacher, if, if you're going to be doing anything new and innovative, you need to make sure that your purpose and your vision lines right. up with what is the vision of the district. That's or, exactly and, right. And typically, if you don't agree with the vision of the district, then we'll – We've got other issues, right? right that's exactly but um, as long as, you, as if someone if someone asks you, so why are you using this, and you have detailed points, I don't see administrators or tech administrators really having any kind of issue with it. Right, right. right? Obviously, we want to keep our students safe, and yeah, I, mean, I mean that's you know every conversation that doesn't you know you know something may tweak a little bit, but that's yeah. that's exactly right. If you know exactly where you're going, you know share that vision, you know, and I always you know can you summarize it in one two sentence. You know, here's what we're going. And, you know, our kind of motto in our tech department is what's best for students. Yeah. You know, it may not be what's best for us, but if it's best for students, that's what we're going to run. And I, you know, I think that's true. Of the majority of our teachers, um, we we want to do what's best for our students. And that's our that's our focus. That's our goal. Awesome. Yeah. So change doesn't have to be so scary. Just exactly make sure right. to keep that empathy out there uh, and your patience going because, you know, it, things are going to just be different for a little while. But you'll get used to it. And the next thing you know, you'll be ready for the next change. So uh, before we close out, I got two other t- things to talk about. Um, I hear you're going to be a special speaker 
at an upcoming event in July. Is that correct? That is correct. Uh, July 16th and 17th is METC's um, Google Extravaganza, which is going to be held in Fort Zumwalt. And uh, I'll be one of the featured speakers for that event and super excited um, to talk about that and um, share. I uh, have a couple of sessions actually representing both days. And uh, I know one of the sessions will be uh, just on creation and allowing our students to create and, uh, you know, giving them the, um, you know, openness and uh, to do whatever they want to. So creating video, creating audio, creating posters, creating digital graphics. And um, it's amazing what we see from our students when they have the ability to create. Yeah, I can't agree. I, I agree. I remember seeing you uh, when you used to do our Google Manias, MTC mm-hmm. Google Mania. Yeah. And, um, you know, I loved watching the hour and a half for the years. You always had a creation um, section or whatever, you know. Yeah. And so it's neat to see um, a lot of the different things you can do because it's usually all within Chromebooks or within right, Chrome yes. at least. Right. Because uh, people say, well, we can't go Chrome because you can't create like you can. And yeah. that's not true at all. Far yes. from the yes, truth. That's exactly so, right. So that'll be a great event. I will be there as well. Um, I'm not a featured speaker by any means. So um, I'll You're be excited. You're a Google man, though. Uh, well, of course. <laughs> so, uh, but we're excited to hear Greg come to that. But uh, in addition to that, you have your own big event. Uh, coming up later this year, right? That is correct. In October, um, we have uh, the Google, it's actually the official name is Missouri Summit featuring Google for Education. Um, this will be held in St. Charles School District. Okay. We've, uh, we're on year number five, which is pretty impressive. Wow, that is- um, it's all planned by uh, Missouri Google Innovators, and um, we plan the entire event specifically for teachers and utilizing Google in their classroom. And uh, it's really open for administrators, teachers, uh, district leaders, and it's a great day. We keep it fun. It's on a Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the price is great, though. Right now, actually, and I think it's open until August 1st, we have... Um, uh, early bird special, which is sixty dollars, um, gets you a great breakfast, great lunch, snacks. I would say we have amazing door prizes, <laughs> but most importantly, uh, being able to learn about Google and be just kind of share what everybody's doing and learn from each other on uh, Google tools and uh, learning in around the state and around the region. Nice. And uh, are your call proposals still out for that? Or it's is still it open. Still, yeah, okay. we still have a couple more uh, weeks for that. So uh, definitely, yeah, if anyone out there has uh, ideas and wants to share how they're using Google in their classroom, we'd love for them to present. Uh, like I said, it's just a great time. We have a lot of a lot of fun. Past couple of years, we've had a keg, keg of root beer, just to clarify, <laughs> on there. Um, you know, ice cream sundaes on our uh, uh, root beer uh, floats on the way out, and we just we just have a lot of fun um, yeah. at the event. I agree. It, it's been a lot of. I think I've been to almost all. I think I've been to all five of them. Um, and there, it is it is a great time. And I am a Google guy, as many of you have uh, surmised over the episodes. Mm-hmm. But um, I, I really enjoy really any of those Google events. We're doing Google Mania next week in June, um, and then we're doing the Google Extravaganza. And I always go to your um, Missouri Summit, um, and really. Just, it's nice to kind of be around like-minded people. You know, I, I geek out about Google uh, with my family or uh, with some of my friends, and they're like, what are you talking about, dude? Calm down. <laughs> and uh, But I can geek out amongst uh, the other Googlers there at these events. So definitely check all those out. Uh, is there a way to get a hold or find out more about that? Event? Yeah. So GAF, uh, so the website's GAFMO, G-A-F-E-M-O.com, and all the information's on there. If there's any questions, you can contact us through those pages. But but uh, there's more information as we, uh, as it, you know, as sessions become out or uh, registration, which is open also. Mm-hmm. Um, just go on there and fill that out, and you'll uh, you'll you'll get more information that way. Awesome. So gapmo.com for uh, the GEG Mo Summit in October, Saturday, sixty dollars. Great early bird price. Good through our. August, I think you I said? I think August 1, yes. August yes. 1, so you may want to get on that little summer homework for you. Uh, for the other events, Google Extravaganza is done through METC, so metcedplus.org. You'll see more information there as well. Uh, you, If you're listening to this right away, you might be able to get into Google Mania that's going to be the Monday after this releases. And so it um, be a real quick turnaround if you want to join us for that two-day event as well. But metcedplus.org is where you'll also find the show notes. So any kind of thoughts and anything that, that uh, Greg wants to share, anything that we want to add to this notes that'll be there as well so uh, as we end up our time here greg uh go ahead and leave us with one more tidbit of of the power of change and moving things forward and then remind everybody who you are and how they can get a hold of you if they have any questions all right uh change is tough change is emotional change you know just brings out everything but the reality is when you when you know where you're going 
you have that vision, you know, just set sail and, uh, you know, uh, amazing things are going to happen uh, on there. And, uh, you know, it's, it's for our students and that's what's, that's what's fantastic about it. So yeah, uh, Greg Lawrence from Winsville School District, uh, Director of Technology. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Greg Lawrence and on Google Plus at Greg Lawrence also. Um, so love to connect with you um, through those connections there. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Greg, for joining us today. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. It was great talking with you. Yes. And uh, everybody listening, thank you for joining us. And until we see you again, have a good one. Thank you very much for listening to that interview with Greg Lawrence. Greg, thank you for uh, uh, joining us again. I greatly appreciate that. Uh, great conversation, some great traits. Definitely patience uh, is a good thing to have as you're dealing with anything that has changed over the summer. Um, you know, we talked about at the beginning of the show, summertime is a great time to, to make some changes in the tech world because there's nobody on the network. But it's also a hard time to test new changes because there's nobody on the network so um it's always it can always be frustrating to come back from summer break and all these things have changed and sometimes it doesn't work because you've all of a sudden got four or five thousand people on the network and it tends to slow some things down so um great ideas great tips and some traits as well resiliency i think is key for for those that are trying things don't be afraid to try that is huge um your children will benefit it for sure and but um just know as you do if you're, if you're a runner, uh, like Greg and I are, you know you're going to come across a lot of beta testing, uh, a lot of stuff that will break down on you, may not work, may not function in the right spot, but you know in the long run it's going to be very beneficial. So uh, keep those runners, keep going. Um, that's probably about the only running I do go ahead and do, but, um, you know, hey, it's, it's good for me, right? So anyway, um, be sure to check out Greg on social media. Hit, hit him up there if you have more information about how to handle change. You can connect with me as well on Twitter, Tech Percent, And um, check out those two events that we talked about. We talked about the Google Extravaganza on metcedplus.org. And check out hit, uh, their GEG event, Mo Google Sun Summit by GEG, uh, in October, too. Two great events um, around Google topics. So check those out. Thanks for checking out this episode. If you liked it, be sure to share it on with others and uh, share the wealth and, and pre- give the information to others. If you uh, would like to leave some feedback on iTunes, that would be awesome. That also helps uh, spread this out to other people too. So thanks again. Appreciate the listen. And so we just talk again. Have a good one. Thank you for listening to the Midwest Education Technology Communities Podcast, otherwise known as METC. To learn more about METC, check out our website at metcedplus.org or follow us on social media at METCEdPlus. Learn more about Education Plus at edplus.org.